Hi, Pastor Kevin here. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, and I've got some exciting news for you. Right now, I'm uh, in this uh, Family Life Center with the praise team and some uh, friends who are, who are filming this, but uh, a whole bunch of empty chairs. Well, I hope that's going to stop starting next week. I'm excited to announce that we're going back to in-person worship starting next Sunday, September the 13th. Uh, we've decided to begin that uh, process again, and uh, just a few announcements about that. Uh, we're going to do it in, in phases. The first phase is going to be the resumption of the 8.30 and the 10 o'clock worship service. Uh, we'll be social distancing, so seating will be limited. And we found the best way to do that is, again, to do reservations. So every uh, Monday morning, we'll open the reservation time. And we invite you to go on our website, www.samjonesumc.org, or call the church office and make a reservation for the 8.30 or the 10 o'clock service uh, and, and come. Uh, and we'll uh, hope uh, you come and, and have a part of that. I ask that you please wear your, your mask and uh, please, please, above all, don't come if you're feeling ill. I'm uh, also excited to say we're going to have nursery. The nursery will be open for the 10 a.m. service for children birth through three years of age. And we'll also have WOW, Worship Our Way, the children's time of worship for children pre-K through the fifth grade. Again, we're going to ask that you make reservations. Very important. Make reservations for the nursery. Make reservations uh, for the WOW uh, program. And then we'll gradually be adding things. The second phase will start in October, and we'll begin uh, the first uh, Wednesday night 
tithe in October with Wednesday night dinner. That would be the most uh, obvious thing that we'll start back with. Wednesday night dinner, the first Wednesday night in October. There'll be changes, of course, in the procedure, uh, but it'll be the same great food and wonderful fellowship. And once again, we're going to have to have reservations in order to make sure everyone's safe. We have plenty of social distancing. We have adequate facilities for everyone. We're going to ask for reservations for that. So please plan to do that when we begin that back in October. And then the third phase, uh, again, we'll open up a little bit more. That'll start in Advent. And that's when the 11 o'clock worship service will be added back among lots of other things. I do want to say this very quickly. The secondly is that our online services and will continue. We will live stream both services. They'll be available at 8.30 and 10 o'clock and then available anytime after that. And I want to assure you, we're going to continue that. We're going to continue to uh, improve them and also to add more substance and uh, more innovative things uh, to our online presence. So I'm very excited uh, about that. And thirdly, and, and I hope you'll hear this, I want to encourage you to worship in the way you feel most suits your position right now. If you want to come to worship in person at church, please come and join in. Um, if you feel more comfortable worshiping online, please, please, please do that. The Holy Spirit is not inhibited by a computer screen. God will still speak to your heart. And, 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 and you know, whenever we leave our house these days, um, we assume some risk. And everybody's got to decide on the level of risk that they're willing to take. For me personally, with all the safety precautions we have in place, I feel it's safe enough for me and my family to come and enjoy the live uh, service with my church family. But know this, please. If you choose to stay home and worship online, <laughs> Jesus still loves you. And I still love you. And it's absolutely fine. And I'll see you here just as soon as you feel it's safe enough for you and your family. Uh, please understand that. Please. Um, just a couple of other things. Uh, we'll continue to have drive-in services uh, on Wednesday. Uh, the next one will be Wednesday, September the 30th. It's for the whole church family, but it is family-friendly. We're going to have free, free snow cones and great worship. Hopefully the weather will be absolutely awesome uh, by then. And, and then finally, just a word of thanks. Uh, here we are in September, and uh, we're in good shape. Our finances are in good shape. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the good mission work that you're doing as, as well. There's still opportunities to uh, serve. Uh, there's still opportunities to serve on the food truck and also give away the food boxes on Monday mornings. Uh, if you have an hour or two on Monday mornings that you can uh, spare, please give me a call or call Chris Hall. We'll give you more details, more information, and would we'll enjoy spending that time with you feeding hungry folks. Uh, Ian, just God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for all you do. And may God bless you in many ways. Thank you. One of the greatest privileges I have as a pastor is performing the sacrament of baptism. Uh, a little while ago, I had the wonderful privilege of baptizing Carter Brock, and I wanted to share this holy moment with our, our church family. All of Christian uh, sacraments and customs, and it is uh, a number of things, including entrance uh, into the church of Jesus Christ in a very special way. And in fact, I don't know if you this, but if you go to the old, old churches, uh, they'll have uh, like a baptismal font or, um, or a pool uh, at the entrance of the church. You know, that most of the time now we have them in the back of the church or where the pulpit is, but some of those old churches had it there at the door because it signified that coming into the kingdom of God is just a very special and a, and a, and a wonderful way. So um, uh, we'll get into the pool and we'll do the rest of the inside the pool. How about that? All right. All right what we'll do it this way. Okay, so okay, I'll come back behind you like this, okay? So first of all, I'll ask you some questions, okay? Yeah. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in the scriptures as contained in the Old and New Testament? Do you renounce the evil forces of wickedness and uh, whatever way they present themselves and seek to live a new life and a good life in Jesus Christ? Do you desire to be baptized? Well, it's my honor to do that. Okay, so if you want to cover your mouth, and hold on to my, my hand with this hand, okay? Pardon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
buried in the beautiful likeness of Christ's death, raised in the glorious likeness of his resurrection. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> It's now a great honor and privilege to welcome into membership of Sam Jones Memorial United Methodist Church, Mr. and Mrs. Barry and Pam Green. And we're just so excited to have you as part of the church. And I do have one question to ask you that we ask everyone who joins the church you, as you're coming from another denomination. And that's this. Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and will you support it with your prayers, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Praise God. Well, once again, officially welcome into the fellowship of Sam Jones Church. And I know you'll be a blessing to us, and I pray that we'll be a blessing to you. And when you get a chance, uh, be sure to uh, welcome them into the fellowship of our church. God bless you all. Well, thank you, Pastor Kevin, and good Sunday morning, and indeed welcome. This is our opportunity to come before our God in a time of worship. You know, we are here to give our thanks and praise to God, and His love does endure forever. And so He is worthy of whatever we have to offer to Him. So let's take just a moment and begin our time of worship with prayer. God, You are our, our gracious, holy God. And you have given everything you have to give to us, to call us to you, to open us up, to receive what you have for us. And so we, we choose, God, to sacrifice in this way our time, our energy, our effort, our voice, all that we are, God. We desire to give this to you. So we pray that you would come among us and then go with us into the coming week that is ahead of us. Help us to be your people just as you are our God. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing right now, you're invited to stop doing that and stand up or lift your hands or sing out whatever it is that lets you be in a time of worship. And our song is, Jesus, He Loves Me. lost I was in chains the world had a hold of me my heart was a stone I was covered in shame when he came for me I couldn't run couldn't run from his presence I couldn't run couldn't run from him Jesus, He loves me, He loves me, He is for me. Jesus, how can it be? He loves me, He is for me. It was a fire deep in my soul. to the light when he called my name I could
us bow our heads and our hearts as we come once again before our God in prayer. Holy, holy God. We come now leaning on your complete and total goodness. You are good. You are right. You are righteous and holy, dear God. You are our creator, Lord God, giver of all grace and mercy. We have witnessed it. We know it in our hearts that you are our all in all. You are what we need. And so we give you our thanks, God. We thank you. We love you. We honor you desire to let your glory reflect through our own lives. We testify that you sent your one and only son to us so that we might have life, not the kind of life that the world gives, but real life, true life, abundant life as you give it. And so we come before you in this time of worship. God, when we have an opportunity to share with someone else, give us words, your words. And whether we're intentionally sharing or not, help us to live in an attitude that reflects who and what you want us to be at all times, every minute, realizing that you, our God, have sacrificed yourself for us. so we do come offering up our voices, our hearts, our minds, all that we are. We lift these to you as living sacrifices. We seek you in all that we are and all that we do, God, desiring that your goodness would be complete in us. God, we ask you that you would forgive us. Help us to recognize those times when we do not speak or live or share according to your will help us to turn back to you as we continue to seek your ways and God there are so many around us who are hurting people in physical pain or emotional or spiritual you know who they are and you know their situations even better than we do but God, we lift those to you now. Broken bodies, broken relationships, broken spirits. Pray for your complete and full healing and for your peace that you have promised us. God, we know you. We love you. We desire to be all yours. Now, God, we lift our hearts and voices together to you as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Well, we've had a wonderful time in worship thus far. We come now to our message for the day. The sermon is entitled, I Love You. The scripture comes from Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 8 through 14. I'll be reading in the common English version. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. The commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't desire what others have, and any other commandments are all summed up in one word. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law. As you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake from your sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over. The day is near. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the weapons of light. Let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and getting drunk and not in sleeping around and obscene behavior, not in fighting and obsessions. Instead, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. Paul made two points that were very specific. His first one is, uh, don't be in debt. If you owe it, Pay it and clear the books. Now, in our culture, in this time in the 21st century, and it was the same in the 20th century, uh, debt is a part of life. But I rephrase the question to put it like this. Don't be in debt so that you are burdened and destroyed. If you make $100 and you spend $120, you are in trouble. If you make $100 and you spend 75, and you tithe 10, and you say 15, you're doing well. You're, you're handling your debt. But then there's another debt that we have that Paul points out, and it's a debt we can't get around. We have that debt every day, and that's the debt to God to pay in love. To love others as God has loved us. And we can never repay that debt, for it's there every day. But it's a wonderful debt to have. It's a debt that, that frees us to serve the Lord and to be the people God calls us to be. So, as we move forward, I want you to look at and hear one other text to understand that the New Testament covers this in many ways and it has the same message. This is 1 John 4. Verses 7 through 21, I will cover them quickly. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It's not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friend, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. We have known and have believed the love of God, that the love of God has for us. God is love and those who remain in love remain in God and God remains in them. There's no fear in love. But perfect love dries out fear because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. And those who say, I love God, and then hate their brother or sister are liars. After all, those who do not love their brother and sister who they can see can hardly love God who they have not seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brothers and sisters also. So two different apostles and theologians 
who contributed to the New Testament and other places in the New Testament, it is obvious that we have a debt of love to pay and we can never repay it, but we can enjoy it and we're to go forward in it. So I want us to look at some practical examples and see how we're doing good or how we're not doing so good. Uh, one of those examples is driving. I, I don't know why. Uh, I sometimes have succumbed to this in the past, but we get in our car and we suddenly, or a car or a truck, let me say, or whatever it is, and we suddenly think we're the most important person in the world and everybody's supposed to get out of our way. And we are supposed to get from point A to Z as fast as our vehicle will take us. Exceeding the speed limits is perfectly permissible. Running other people off the road is fine. Just, you're in control. Now, you may say, well, Al, you're carrying that to extremes. So I'm going to give you some examples from just the last two weeks. Uh, it happens all the time. But uh, I had a doctor's appointment last week. It was a good appointment. I left, and I'm coming down Joe Frank Harris Parkway. I'm at Martin Luther King intersection. I get there just in time to be the first car stopped at a red traffic light. So I get to enjoy the beauty of that intersection while the light runs through its cycle. I watch the turn cycle come on and the cars turning left that are next to me and the cars turning left in front of me. And just as that light is starting to turn red, a car comes very slowly up the turn lane. The light has just turned red and that car turns across all of us that are waiting to head on down the parkway. Now, I gave way, but that car was so slow in crossing. And I can walk at twice the speed that that car was going. And as he passed, he waved his hand and smiled real big. And I think he was just saying, I just took you. I, I think he was full of self-love and definitely not full of agape love. Uh, I kind of laughed it off and went on down and uh, didn't let it ruin my day. A little bit later, uh, and on another day, I was at Ace Hardware. Had a project I was doing, and you never do your project and have everything you need. You've always got to go and pick something up. Sometimes you have to make two or three trips. But I had gone to Ace and got exactly what I needed. I was out. I got in my car, got in the parking lot, and the traffic light had turned red at Ingalls. And the traffic was backed up, and there was about 40 feet between me and the traffic that was stopped. And there was two cars, two vehicles coming, a car and a truck. And I could have pulled out in front of the car, but it would have been dangerous. I thought maybe they might slow down and let me out, but not that car or not the truck. Uh, they both managed to park in such a way that I was blocked. I couldn't even pull out behind them at that point. Uh, fortunately, the next driver behind in an older truck stopped and motioned that I should come out when the light changed. And the light changed and I came out and I thought how self-centered they were that they couldn't pause five seconds to let me out for the 40 feet they were going to travel to stop and wait two minutes for the light to change. But that's the way things are. Lynn and I were coming home, and uh, I don't remember where we had been exactly, but we were driving down a street with those sidewalks, and we come up behind a person pushing a baby carriage in the right-hand lane. Uh, the person didn't seem to realize we were even behind them. Uh, I went as slow as I could and waited till there was a clear opportunity. I could pull around in the left-hand lane and go around them. And just as we passed them, I took a, a, a gander. And the person was not only pushing a baby in that carriage, but had the cell phone up to their head talking on it. And they were so absorbed in what they were doing that they put both themselves, the baby, and anybody else at peril. And I thought, that's an example of love that we don't need. That's being overwhelmed in self-love. Now, I don't know what was going off, and I don't mean to be judgmental, but the proper rules of the road say, when you're walking, you walk facing traffic, not with traffic. 
uh, Lynn had an experience. She was heading down to Ackworth, and uh, uh, she was stopped at, a, a, again, a red traffic light, and there was a car coming out of a business, and it was an emergency parking lane right there next to her. And so she had motioned for the car to come out in front of her, and just as the car started to come out, Two vehicles from somewhere behind Lynn came flying past, almost hit that car. They had to rush and get right to that turn light to turn. That was the most important thing in their day. Uh, Lynn went on and let the car out and all went well. But those are just examples of how we can get so absorbed in what we think we need to be doing that we don't see the world around us and we just take advantage of everybody. Uh, that's not what we're called to do. Paul tells us, tells us that we're approaching the daylight, that we need to wake up, that the second coming of Jesus is at hand. And we need to be ready for the day and put aside the things of the night and be ready to face the day. He's saying that we need to live a moral lifestyle. So are we doing it? Every day we have the opportunity anew to live the first day of the rest of our life. Are we going to live it with Christ-like love, agape love, or are we going to live it with selfish love? It's a choice we have to make, and sometimes we're going to fail in that choice. But when we fail, we don't beat ourselves up. We pick ourselves up and say, I don't want to do that the next time. I want to do the right thing. I want to move forward. I want to be a child of faith. I want to remember that Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. So you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you're my disciples when you love each other. Oh, that's pretty clear. Again, it's to love each other. When I was a child, we learned to sing a song. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red or yellow, black and white. They are all precious in his sight. And I realize that every moment is precious and every moment is as significant or insignificant as I make it. So I want you to think about that as we look back in a little bit of history. How did the good Christian people in South Africa enact apartheid and say that because they were European, they were better than the black Africans that live there with them or the other people of color. In doing that, they actually denied Mahatma Gandhi from embracing the Christian faith. He said, I love the Christian God, but I don't love the Christian people because he experienced that and he couldn't go into the church because he was brown. And then, in our own nation, the laws of segregation that put down people because they were of African descent and they couldn't be a part of our society. It was wrong and we struggled in the 50s and 60s and into the 70s to overcome that we finally came around to what I had thought was overcoming it. What I got to experience was wonderful because I got to go into war, into combat. And there, there were African Americans, there were European Americans, there were Latino Americans, there were Native Americans, there were Asian Americans. And you know what? We were all OD. And we were all brothers and we all had to take care of each other because there were people there trying to kill us. And I realized in that that the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese were God's people too. We were all one and we need to be one and we need to be one people. And now we're still having that fight today and we shouldn't be. No one should be put down for any reason, but it's there and it's not of God. I assure you that it is not agape love that that is done. We're to love as God would have us love. We have a debt to repay every day. And that debt is to love with all the love we can. So how are we going to do it? How are we going to understand it? Well, Paul says to be ready for the daylight. It's coming. But while you're in the night, you've got to be ready for the night. So I want to give you some thoughts about being ready for the night and being ready to face the daylight. Some little stories that are simple. 
Years ago, I was driving my car, and um, it was night, and uh, I was on a road without traffic lights, or without uh, uh, street lights, excuse me, and uh, suddenly, my lights go out. It was a major road and I could see a side road to turn on. I turned on that road real quick. I scampered and got a flashlight out and looked through my uh, glove box and found I had some extra fuses there. And I was able to replace the fuse and get my lights working and drive home. But what would I have done if I hadn't had that fuse? Would I have cussed the darkness or would I have found another way? Now, I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about a curvy mountain road. Uh, where as you go around a curve, there's a steep cliff on one side of you and abyss on the other side. And you're driving that road at night. And then imagine your lights go out. I heard the story about a couple that this happened to. And they didn't know what they were doing. They were terrified when their lights went out on that curvy road. They couldn't pull to the side of the road. They didn't see where it was. And they would just quickly pray, the Lord help us. And the uh, man who was driving said, I, I don't know. Said, just, uh, my hand just went out without me telling it to. And I grabbed a hold of the light switch and I just turned it all the way to off and I turned it back on. And it took me about a second and a half or two seconds and the lights came on. And we were saved. And God had been with us. And we made it through that treacherous road because we had lights. See, we've got to be able to navigate the darkness to be able to praise God in the daylight. We've got to be ready for God is coming. And we've got a debt to pay every day. Kevin shared with me a story and he said that I could use this. And it's just marvelous. It fits our time because we just had a hurricane last week strike the Louisiana coast and there's needs down there. This was Hurricane Katrina and it had hit and... and just devastated New Orleans and, and people were taken up and, and churches all over the place were putting together tractor trailer trucks full of stuff to send to New Orleans. And, and Kevin's church did that and one of the people in the church was delivering it and uh, they were driving to New Orleans and they stopped in a town in Mississippi and they stopped to eat and they got out of the truck and was eating and so people there asked what, what, what they were doing and told them and they said, haven't you seen the local news? And he said, no, what's on the local news? He said, there's too many things coming into New Orleans. They don't have a place to store them. They're having to burn stuff in the street. Everybody has all the clothing and, and bedding they need right now. They don't need any more stuff. But said, you know, we were battered by that hurricane too, and we don't have enough stuff here. Uh, so the driver made an executive decision right then, and he said, well, we're going to unload this truck here. And, and they unloaded it there in the town in Mississippi, not its original destination, but it met the, met the original purpose for it. And as they were doing that, uh, he met a pastor and he said, I want you to come look at my church. It's just been devastated by this. And uh, so he went with him and he looked at the church and it was completely destroyed. There was just a foundation left. And uh, he said, we don't have the money to rebuild this and the insurance to rebuild it. We need help. And uh, he thought about it a minute and prayed real quick. And he said, uh, we'll help you rebuild that church. Our church will help you do that. Uh, so he, he called Kevin and told him he was on the way back and uh, told him the two executive decisions he made. The first one, Kevin thought, well, that was a good decision. And then the second one, he said, uh, well, I guess we're going to be rebuilding the church. And uh, so they sent out work teams from their church and they went out constantly, went down and worked with the people there and they rebuilt that church. I don't know if it took a year or two years, but they rebuilt that church and they were ready to celebrate it. Now, Kevin's church was a United Methodist church and this church was a Baptist church, but they had rebuilt it. And so uh, they thought in the celebration they were going to invite the preacher up to the, the church and, and they thought, well, maybe we'll get a tent and we'll put the tent out to meet in. So uh, uh, they checked on prices of tents and those that have tents to rent dearly 
appreciate their tent and the value of it. And uh, uh, it wasn't economically feasible to do that. Kevin expected that there'd be a good love offering, at least 6,000, maybe uh, eight or 10,000. But uh, if you sink four to 5,000 in a tent, there's nothing there. So uh, uh, then someone said, well, the Baptist Association has a tent. You need to check with them. So he did. And uh, uh, first thing that the person he was talking to and said, now, wait a minute, you're a United Methodist Church? He said, yes. He said, Why'd you rebuild a Baptist church? And said, uh, well, uh, we're all part of the body of Christ and they needed it. And, and we helped them and we're glad we did. And uh, we'd like to borrow your tent as a part of our celebration for this. And he said, well, I'm going to have to check with the higher ups on that and see what. I said, I'll get back with you in a couple of days. And uh, sure enough, he got back and he said, well, it's been approved. I'm surprised. He said, no, we just need to verify the church. Now, what do you say the name of that church is and where it's located and, he said, I can't find a church with that name on my records. And he said, well, it's a missionary Baptist church. And he said, it's a missionary Baptist church? And he hung up right then. Uh, they didn't get the tent. They decided it was better to have their services inside in the air conditioning. And they had a wonderful three-day revival with a pastor from that church in Mississippi coming in and preaching. And a good offering was taken up and love was shared. And they did the right thing. But isn't it interesting that within the body of Christ, there were some that chose not to do the right thing. You see, we're not perfect. Oh, we all make mistakes. And we're not perfect within our own church. We all make mistakes. But we've got to remember, every day, we've got a debt of love to pay. Because God has loved us so much. And if we can't remember that, we don't know what I love you means. We've got to remember God loves us and we're to love everybody else. And it doesn't matter what they look like or what we think about them, whether they're our enemy or not, we're to love them because that's what Christians do. You'll know they're Christians by their love. So my question to you today is how are you going to love each other? Reflect on that as we go in prayer, as the praise brand is coming back up. Oh, Lord, our God, I just uh, thank you that you have first loved us and you came, Lord Jesus, and you were the perfect sacrifice for all the sin that ever was and ever will be. And my sins are forgiven in your name and all of our sins are forgiven in your name. And you've called us as Christians to be proactive, not reactive. So may we live today realizing that you do not live in broken covenants, but you do live in souls that have been beaten and crushed and you have restored. And your love is there. And may your love flow forward in all that we're about. In the power and glory of your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. One thing remains, his love never fails. We continue in worship. Song. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love, your love. gives up on me and it's higher than the mountains that I face and it's stronger than the power of the grave it's constant in the trial and the change this one thing This one thing remains Your love never fails and never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails and never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails and never gives up
God's love never runs out, never runs out on any of us. And so we need to remember that every day we awaken is the first day of the rest of our life. Every day we awaken, we're closer to the Lord. If that's our last day here on earth, then we're in heaven with the Lord. If the Lord returns, then we're with the Lord. We are winning every way. And the debt we have of love to pay is not hard. So I ask you to reflect on these questions now. How are you doing with your debt? Is it easy to cover or do you struggle with it? And does your debt frighten you? Is love a driving force or a warm feeling for you? And can you daily practice love for others? God practiced love for us. He said, I love you this much as he died on the cross. And now we're called to love each other this much. So go forward in the love of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forward saying, I love you, God. I love you, my brother and sister. Amen. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the Gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love.